Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. This channel has no intention of confirming what you already know to be true. Otherwise, what use would be it? But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about caliber wars. Uh, not 9mm versus 45, but 9mm versus 22 long rifle. <laughs> yeah, no contest, right? No contest? Really? Let's consider how they might be closer than you think. Let's look at, uh, for example, my Hellcat. Uh, with uh, with one, um, a 111 round mag and a round in the chamber, my Hellcat weighs, loaded, weighs 655 grams. Now the P17, with it, if it has just one round in the chamber, chamber, but otherwise is empty, weighs 340 grams. Now if you subtract, the weight of the Hellcat loaded with 11, 11 plus 1 rounds and the P-17 with just one round in the chamber, we get a difference of 315 grams. Now it turns out that the weight of one P-17, 16 round magazine, weighs 79 grams. So, remember we have 315 grams left over from our difference between the Hellcat and the P-17. So how many magazines are equal, how many magazines of 22 on the P-17 are equal to the weight of the Hellcat with a total of 12 rounds? So 315 divided by 79 gives us 3.98 magazines. That, let's just round that up, I mean, <clears throat> to four, four magazines. So four magazines is a total of 64 rounds. So a Hellcat, with 12 9 millimeters weighs the same as the P-17 with 65 22. Now that works out if you f figure uh, 65 divided by 12 we get 5.41 rounds of 22 per one round of 9 millimeter. Okay that sounds pretty good and definitely we have a round count advantage on the 22. But let's look at uh, the total grains of the actual bullet. This is uh, this one 9mm round, that is a 115 grain bullet. This is a critical defense. Uh, this is a CCI mini mag and has a 40 grain. So let's say, so we're comparing one 115 grain bullet to 5.4 40 grain bullets. So that's 216 grains versus 115 grains. That's kind of an interesting comparison. So when we look at the fact that 5.4 rounds of 22 are available versus one round of 9 millimeter, we get uh, not quite double the actual lead going down range. Okay, let's look a little more at terminal ballistics. Let's think of the kinetic energy. So 5.4 rounds of this, which has 128 foot-pounds, gives us a total of 681 foot-pounds of energy delivered versus this uh, 115 grain 9 millimeter critical defense round is 332 foot-pounds. So now we are actually at double the kinetic energy when we, when we look at this as being 5.4 of these versus one of these. Now that's, that's interesting enough, but yeah, you may say that this 9mm, it's one shot for a stop, potentially. Well, as I mentioned in the, and, I, and this is kind of where I got into this, I mentioned, I quoted an article that mentioned, and I'm going to quote it again here because I think it's pretty, pretty interesting. Felons hit with a 22 long rifle, that's one 22 long rifle, were incas incapacitated by just one shot to the torso or head 60% of the time. Now, primarily due to better shot placement compared to just 47% of the time for the 9mm or 51% of the time for the, 40, for the 45 ACP. So don't underestimate its stopping power. But then they mention a word of warning that 31% of the felons were not incapacitated no matter how many times they were hit in the torso with the 22. 
Now, of course, headshots were another matter. So anyway, the failure rate of not incapacitating the aggressor is a little higher, about twice as high on the 22. Now I've got the data that's behind that claim and I'll include a link down in the description if you want to go check it out. This is based on some data by Greg Elifritz. On the 22, the average number of rounds to incapacitation is 1.38. The average number of rounds until incapacitation on the 9mm were 2.45. So it's taken almost, almost twice as many 9mm to incapacitation. Hmm, that's a little bit surprising. It sounds all great. Sounds like, okay, we should all be switching to the 22 because clearly the 9mm is not effective. Now, the data is perhaps skewed by the fact that police, almost all police, use 9s, 40s, and 45s. You're going to rarely ever see a police officer or anyone in law enforcement using the 22 long rifle. And uh, police have a little bit different role than civilians. They cannot just, they're not just trying to disengage. They must subdue or actually even, or potentially even kill an aggressor. Civilians, which are perhaps more likely to be using a 22, they're probably more interested in just scaring off an aggressor or doing a covering retreat from an aggressor. But then again, we got to think that, you know, if you see my video only hits matter, there's a big question mark at the end of that. Hits aren't the only thing that matter. You've got to remember that no matter whether you fire a 22 at someone or a 9 millimeter at them, and even if you completely miss them, their physiological reaction to that is going to be the same pretty much regardless. There's going to be a crouch, the heart rate's going to go way up, they're going to have a loss of muscle control, motor control, uh, tunnel vision on you, who they consider the threat, auditory exclusion, all these physiological factors that you're going to input on them whether or not it's 9 or, or 22. And they're going to be making a rush probably for cover. Now, let's look at some other things. Of course, one re another reason the 22 maybe is more effective is that it's uh, such light recoil that practical accuracy is easy with the 22. A uh, little more recoil on the 9 millimeter, especially with your if you're running one of the you know new super compact micro compact nines. And then also, uh, there's they're louder. <laughs> Try shooting both of these without ear protection, the 22 and the 9 millimeter. Now the 22 long rifle out of a pistol is going to be about 152 decibels. The 9 millimeter is 160, which uh, if you know how the logarithmic, logarithmic scale of decibel systems work, that's almost twice as loud uh, to the human ear. And I'll include a link down below to some information on that. So less decibels of the 22 perhaps can help aid you as a gunfighter because you've already have an, as a if you're in a self-defense situation you are also dealing with auditory exclusion so that's already a problem for you in your situation and adding the deafening effects of the muzzle blast of the nine millimeter say over a 22 is going to exacerbate that problem so maybe using the 22 long rifle instead improves your ability to hear things around you, to communicate with your teammates, whatever. Now, another thing is, is that to become proficient with uh, your firearm, you have to practice with it. And which you're gonna, which of these are you going to be able to practice more? The 22 versus 9 millimeter. The 9 millimeter is going to cost you about six times more per round than the 22 say about 30 cents for the 9 versus say 5 cents for easy calculation of the 22. So if you say you've got a budget, let's say your budget for practicing is $60 a month. That means if you have $60 a month, you're going to be able to practice with 200 rounds of 9 millimeter a month versus 1,200 rounds of 22 a month. Now over a year, that translates into 2,400 rounds of 9mm, sounds pretty good, 
or 14,400 rounds of 22. Now, which do you think you're going to be more proficient with, 22 or 9? Now, so we got to think, is, does the kinetic energy, or allegedly kinetic energy capacity of the single 9mm round, does it outperform, say, the single kinetic energy of the 22 round, but a 22 round paired with improved marksmanship skills? Most people, and I think myself included, find that they can shoot the 22 faster and, and be, still be accurate than they can the 9 and still be accurate. How many seconds does it take you to put 5 rounds of 9mm onto the A zone of a target? And then however, however many seconds that is, then let's do a test to see, okay, in that time frame, let's see how many 22s we can put on the same target. Uh, I've got a quote here. You can fire 10 accurate shots from the semi-automatic 22 pistol or rifle in about the same time you can fire five or six shots from a center fire handgun or rifle. So they're saying you can fire almost double the number of shots of the 22 versus a center fire. Now I'm not sure if it's quite that much, but I'm, I'm certainly it's going to be easier to fire this rapid and keep it on target than it is the 9. Now the other thing is, is if you have to shoot from awkward positions from behind cover where you can't get like a locked wrist or a two-handed hold, and uh, so that light recoiling pistol is going to be easier to manage. Or if you're holding up like a ballistic shield, you know, to protect yourself and then having to reach around that and shoot from one side to the other, in, again, in kind of awkward positions, it helps to be a light recoiling pistol. Now let's go back to what we talked about earlier, the fact that uh, and according to the data that uh, Greg Elf Elifritz found, discovered, he, I mean he did some massive amount of research on this, is that, um, you know, it mentions that there's a 31% chance that this will not incapacitate the attacker versus I think it was like 13% for the 9mm. Now and that sounds maybe not as good but the thing is what they found is in in a Claude's uh, Claude's lifetime study of defensive gun uses he has yet to find a single case where an armed citizen was killed by a criminal after the criminal had taken at least one 22 round in the case of civilian defensive gun uses the criminal almost always flees after the first hit I have been unable to find any gunfights that prove Claude wrong. That's pretty powerful. That adds credence to the, for the civilian at least, of the 22. Now of course for law enforcement where they, they're not just trying to, you know, stop an aggressor, they're trying to apprehend the aggressor. And so they, they have to kind of step lean into and uh, take and capture the aggressor or kill them whereas the civilians we're all we're only concerned about stopping the attack or getting away and getting ourselves away from from the aggressor so it's kind of different roles and looking at it from that way the 22 is looking awfully promising now I'm going to include a link down in the description about using the, the article Using the 22 for Self-Defense by Greg Elifritz. Now you really need to check this out and then go check out Greg's amazing resume. This guy has credentials out the wazoo. I don't think I've seen anyone, anyone else on the planet that has the credentials that he has for from gunfighting, knife fighting, grappling, you know, jiu-jitsu I believe. Uh, I mean it comes to self-defense gunfighting and then he's a trainer he's gone to a lot of the big major training courses 
uh, just just check out his resume it, you'll be blown away it's amazing I'll include a link of that to to his resume down the in the description so this guy has some serious credentials way more than me I'm kind of sitting here I'm kind of a you know I kind of started this channel based on you know being ambidextrous because of my experience in paintball but that's nothing compared to what this guy has as far as real world experience and training and he's also been a police officer since I think I think it was like 1995 so been in the business a long time <clears throat> now let's look at some other things uh, the for some users you know racking the slide is a whole thing and and uh, you know to cycle a slide on a nine millimeter especially as compact nines it there it takes some pretty pretty decent amount of force you know probably 15 or 20 pounds of effort to, to rack the slide whereas the to rack the slide on this little 22 like Keltec PA 17 well I can do that off the front sight with my little finger you know just rack the slide it's like super easy uh, no strength required at all uh, and then which is really nice now one of the advantages of that is if you end up with bloody hands you know if you've seen my video and I'll maybe I'll throw a link into the video the bloody hands video where I experiment with different pistols trying to operate the operate them with bloody hands and I found that some pistols you just could not rack the slide with slick bloody hands now the advantage of the 22 is that it's so light that you could it could be really really slick and it's such a light pull you, it would be no problem racking the slide now the other thing would be you know there's some concern you know that people say that the nine the center fire is going to be more reliable less malfunctions than the 20 uh, the rim fire and okay let's say we give that credence and say that's true um, still because of the ease of racking the slide on the 22 dealing with malfunctions on the 22 is probably going to be faster and easier so if we try inducing some failures let me say we do a stovepipe drill and we have to clear it with a nine millimeter versus a, a 22 it's just going to be a little bit easier and faster with the 22. Now, one other thing was that they've shown testing that says that the the nine millimeter uh, is more reliable, and they can go like you know maybe twenty thousand rounds between you know uh, fa failures, malfunctions, versus the say the twenty two maybe goes fifteen hundred, uh, maybe two thousand rounds if it's if things are going well without malfunctions. Now the uh, now that test, I'm not sure about the, the actual details of that test, but if you check, I bet, my bet is that the test is without cleaning from start to finish. And I suspect that if you were to clean these pistols every, say, 200 rounds, the rimfire would perform a little bit better on the reliability testing. So that's another factor to think of. You know, you're not going to be like in this extended 20,000 round gunfight. So basically, if you clean the 22 keep it clean I think uh, will narrow the gap the reliability gap for malfunctions between the two now the, uh, just as a side note uh, just before doing this video shooting some of the b-roll footage I put another 600 rounds through the Caltech P17 so that puts us uh, my last video was showing you know putting us um, at 1050 so now we're at 1650 rounds with no malfunctions on the Caltech P17 so it's proven pretty reliable uh, but the same goes for my Hellcat again no no malfunctions on it either I do run good ammo through both I'm running CCI through the 22 and uh, while this is my carry load I run uh, either SIG Elite 9mm or uh, uh, CCI Blazer on the Hellcat plus all my firearms are lubed with Sentry Solutions Tough Glide. Now, you'll get some people that say, I would not trust my life to X, whatever, you know. And that almost always when people say that, they're covering up full context or covering up opportunity cost. You know, you see the guys that are talking about, yeah, I won't have a carry a gun that's not, you know, thousand dollars, a Kimber, whatever, you know and uh but yet they're driving around in a pickup with bald tires you know it's it's no you, you got to maintain full context you've got when you dedicate some resources to making a, a pistol ultra reliable those are resources that are be taken taken away from some other areas of your life that may be 
are more important. Uh, like maybe, uh, oh, you got a child. Maybe you should have a, a little bit better child carrier, you know, child seat for to keep your car, children safe in the car. Things like that. Uh, and another thing, far more of us die of heart attacks than from murder. How many of how many of you guys have AEDs in your house or in your vehicle? Uh, I don't either. Uh, let's just be honest that a lot of this, I wouldn't trust my life to X, is mostly just rationalization that we do to, so we can buy cool shit. And hey, I do that too. But like I said, I don't have an AED and I got lots of guns. It doesn't make sense, but that's what we do. And then how many gun owners that say they won't trust their life to X, but do little or nothing to maintain their own physical fitness? Uh, there's a lot of people that do that. Now another thing about the 22 is if, say you do have to do some shoot, shoot somebody in self-defense, in a court of law afterwards, I mean it's, it's not going to probably make a big difference, but a 9 millimeter is going to be like, you know, it just maybe weighs a little bit more against you than maybe if you were carrying 22, just kind of made the 22 like shows that I really don't want to hurt anybody, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> now, another thing is that uh, for, for those of you who are running suppressors, now typically your center fire cartridges are going to be running the browning design where you got the, the barrel that locks, tilts, and rotates down and stuff. So uh, the barrel's having to move and in order for the, the gun to cycle reliably, uh, it's got to be able to handle that suppressor on there and that barrel moving around and that extra weight affecting things. So a suppressor may affect your reliability on your center fire pistols. And this is me speculating, I'm just making shit up. But but the the some of the twenty twos like like the Caltech P seventeen that have a fixed barrel that are blowback, um, those really shouldn't have that issue, reliability issues in that regard. Now they may have, there's going to be some more back pressure, so maybe like on the P-17 some more blast coming out the, uh, the ejection port, uh, gases coming out of it, than if you didn't have the suppressor on there. But, uh, but nonetheless, I think the reliability for suppressed 22 is going to be pretty good. Uh, how about your the life of your firearms? Now, how long does it take a 22 barrel to wear out? Uh, I don't know. It's probably hundreds of thousands of rounds, maybe ha half a million. Now, nine, eh, you know, maybe eh, 30, 40,000 rounds. So, longer barrel life. I mean, it's not a big deal, but something to factor into this whole equation. Now, let's look at, uh, let's get a little more off the deep end and look at for, we're setting up our Z-Day stash. And uh, you're the survivalist getting re ready for Z-Day, the World War Three, you know, uh, the uh, EMP or whatever. And the 22 survivalist, he buys 100,000 rounds of 22. He gets five 22 pistols and five 22 rifles, and he spends about six thousand five hundred dollars. And he's got a hundred thousand rounds of 22. Now to equal the number of rounds with say a nine millimeter, the nine millimeter survivalist, if he buys a hundred thousand rounds and gets five nine millimeter pistols and five nine millimeter carbines, the estimated cost will be about thirty thousand dollars. That's not insignificant difference. Um, and then the other thing is, if you're thinking about Z-Day, we should look at what the, some of the lessons that we can learn from Aleppo and Syria. Now, the sniper war that's been going on in the urban environments there. Now, if you want to imagine uh, a, a worst case scenario for American cities, you know, post uh, the COVID-19 and the, the riots and all that, if America goes the Aleppo direction, what, some lessons to learn from that. Now, the Syrian, Syrian sniper engagements are typically 50 to 200 yards. Now, uh, most of them are using some pretty ghetto 762 by 39 cartridges and, and rifles. But really, there's no reason at those ranges, especially if, say, 50 to 125 yards, not to use the 22. Now, why? One is that uh, it's quieter. Uh, it would be much more difficult to detect the position where the shot, your shot came from. Uh, so, the less noise of the 22, less, 
maybe a little bit less sonic crack is going to be beneficial. Now, the Israeli Defense Forces were using 22s for a while for riot control, and what they found was that uh, they had to give it up because they found that actually the 22 was far more lethal than they thought. Now, the other thing is if you needed to do, uh, if you're in Syria and you needed to do an assassination and you and say you're going into someone's house and it's the whole sneaking into the bedroom to assassinate someone, this is going to be less likely to rouse the neighbors. Not saying that that's what we're going to need to do, but if you're thinking into the world kind of stuff, maybe the 22. Now, another thing is that if you're the sniper and you need to move around, you can carry a thousand rounds of this with ease. Try carrying a thousand rounds of 762 by 39. Be a little bit of a load. Kind of similar to the whole lessons we learned from Aleppo and Syria is the if you're in the end of the world situation or it's borderline, you're approaching the end of the world situation. There's still some rule of law, but it's you're needing some food to survive and you need to go out and do some hunting, maybe some poaching in the uh, say in the city park or something. You're going to be able to do that with the 22 and be less likely to be noticed than you are with a centerfire cartridge. And with the 22, you could even use, say, CB caps, take squirrel, and it'd be like basically the equivalent of an air rifle. So, you know, light and compact carbine like a takedown 1022 or one of the bullpup 22 conversion kits or the Henry Survival. And you have quite a pretty neat little package for hunting, poaching, you know, feeding your family and maybe even simple sniping uh, urban combat warfare that kind of thing and of course yeah the the a real combat rifle is going to be better in some situations but sometimes maybe not attracting so much attention is a good thing i mean just to kind of illustrate how much easier the 22 is to use than say a center fired 556 or 762 is that if you go to get earn your rifleman patch at a Project Appleseed mark, rifle marksmanship clinic, um, you'll find that by using say a Ruger 1022, it is significantly easier to earn the score with a 22. Now part of that is one the, the you know less recoil. Part of it is you you're over a two day period you're like up and down up and down and lifting and moving this rifle about you know two days in a row. So there's a lot of physical exertion of ha man handling the, your your rifle. And so a, a lighter rifle makes things easier as well. And then uh, it's also just less tiring. The fact that it's not quite as loud, even though you are wearing ear protection, a 5.56 five, or 7.62 is going to be a lot louder. And that is just a little bit wearing mentally, whereas a 22 is, is not nearly so tiring to shoot. So anyway, don't discount the 22. Uh, this is something I never thought I would actually be kind of arguing for. I'm not really, I'm not really sure on this yet, and I hope everyone else will maybe do some experiments and report back, share your own videos on this thing, and let's uh, you know explore the idea. Make sure you think of everything, all the factors, not just the fact that this has a behavior bullet and has a. May, well, probably about the same velocity as most of these, but has more kinetic energy versus this. But we got to think of all the factors, training, weight, reliability. It's just a lot that goes into this, not just this makes a bigger hole in people than this. If this is stopping attackers with a 60-some percent reliability versus this is 47 percent, uh, given the other advantages of this, um, you know, I'm not ready to do it yet. I'm still carrying the Hellcat 9mm, but I'm getting to the point where I'm like, maybe I should carry this instead. Maybe I should carry the P17. I bought it to be a practice, you know, pistol, to practice to practice cheaply, and then hopefully some of that skill would translate over to my 9, but Maybe I really should just practice with the 22 and just carry the frickin' 22. It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.